gonna make this easy for you guys. Just get it out of your system right now. Go in the comments, type looking very MM casual on this one. Does MMG even watch NFL games? Wow, MMG's looking so whoa, handsome whoa, today whoa, whoa, and the girth whoa, whoa, whoa. is immaculate. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> it's the off season, it's tier list season. 2024 NFL quarterback tier list. We've got the full 2023 season in the books. I will not be ranking any players that are about to get drafted. It's gonna be really tough to land yourself in F tier. I'll just say that right now at the gates. I really only think that there are two NFL quarterbacks that are S tier. I think that's Lamar Jackson and Patrick Mahomes. Now, Lamar Jackson won MVP, but that doesn't mean anything to me. This was such a dog water MVP season. Comparing Lamar to his other MVP season, you would think he got so much worse. It was just not a high caliber MVP season in the NFL. So I don't think that works in anybody's favor. People who say Lamar's a running back are, are actually delusional. Like actually, this guy is incredible. Now, Lamar Jackson lacks the dynasty that Patrick Mahomes has. I think Patrick Mahomes has all the accolades, all the stats, because number one, he's an incredible quarterback, but he's in a better system than and Lamar. Kind of feel bad for Lamar. If you watch the NFL, you know that Lamar can make absolutely insane throws. I don't want to hear any Lamar B bullshit. This guy is incredible. But while watching that championship game, they just sucked. They sucked. They forgot that, that, you know, they were a dominant run game team in the most important game of the season. There's a sad championship game taking that out of the way, though. He's still an S tier quarterback. So, so those guys are S tier. Let's talk about a guy, Justin Fields. Ooh, Justin Fields is a really tough one. As a quarterback, I think Justin Fields is absolutely a step up from Kenny Pickett. I think Kenny Pickett is an objectively worse quarterback than Justin Fields. I think Justin Fields in the Chicago Bears offense just didn't have the opportunities that he should have. I think Chicago failed him, but I also think Justin Fields underperformed. Justin Fields was supposed to be an ARS tier quarterback. Many people thought he'd be way better than he has performed thus far, but I still don't think he's bad. I'm excited to see what he does in Pittsburgh. I hope he does better than he's done. I think people really expect him to be up here, but I think like Justin Fields haters would actually say he's F tier. I just think that's not true. You have to take Chicago into effect when you're evaluating Justin Fields. So I'm putting him at C tier. And that being said, I think he's a step up from Kenny Pickett. I'm putting Kenny Pickett in D tier. Now, I guess you could kind of make the same counter argument, which is the Pittsburgh Steelers offense is not doing anybody any favors. I think we're going to know the, the true validity of that when we see the Pittsburgh Steelers this upcoming season. Russell Wilson and Justin Fields. My personal opinion, I expect Russell Wilson to be the starter for like six, seven weeks, and then Justin Fields steps in. That's what I expect to happen. Now, if Russell ends up playing really, really good football, they're never going to take him out. But I kind of expect it to be kind of like a mentorship role, and then Fields takes over. He's better than Kenny Pickett. I can't put Kenny Pickett in C tier if I'm putting Justin Fields in C tier. Also, if you want to get in on the NBA playoff action, make sure to use my sponsor, Underdog Fantasy. Underdog is the easiest way to play fantasy, and building a pickup lineup is simple. Select two or more players and go higher or lower on their stat projections. So if you want to tailor fade me, please let me know my selection is on screen. I've been loving NBA recently, so I'm feeling good. Sign up with code MMG to claim your special pick and first time deposit offer of $250 in bonus cash. So for new users, new customers is the best time to get Underdog fans. Underdog's Pick'em is available in 30 plus states. That includes Florida, Texas, and even Canada. So make sure to check it out. Use that link in the description and enjoy the rest of the video. Geno Smith. I really like Geno. Geno Smith. Geno Smith is a quarterback that was expected to just be so horrible as Russell left. And then he really, really stepped it up. But a bit of it was delusion. It was like, oh my God, Geno Smith is so good. Geno Smith just, Geno Smith that. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. I like Geno Smith as a solid like role player quarterback, but with Geno Smith behind the helm, I don't see any NFL team having serious success, but I still like him better than a guy like Justin Fields right now. I like Geno Smith. I'm not putting him in ARS, but I'll put him in B tier. Zappy's dog shit. Almost could put him in F tier, but I'm not going to. I'll put him in D tier alongside Kenny Pickett. Who would you rather have? Probably Kenny Pickett. Are either of these guys absolutely just dog shit horrendous? I'm gonna say no. I'm putting Jalen Hurts in A tier. Really, really, really like Jalen Hurts. Last half of the season was pitiful. And I'm gonna make a comparison that hopefully isn't true because I really like Jalen Hurts. Did you remember when the Arizona Cardinals a few years back were just started the season so good? They still had Chandler Jones. They were like, I think they were 10 and 0 to start the season. Then they proceeded to lose six straight games. And then they got shit on in the first round of the playoffs by the Rams, who then went on to win the Super Bowl, I think. I think that was that year. Regardless, that's what the Eagles remind me of right now. Now, this Eagles team 
team loaded up on a ton of talent in free agency. I don't expect that to happen to them. I just am saying, I really hope it doesn't. Jalen Hurts is excellent. He doesn't throw the ball as well as Lamar, and he's not as fast as Lamar's. There's absolutely no way I can put him in S tier. I think people say tush push merchant as if that works against him. I'm not putting Jalen Hurts in A tier because of his rushing touchdowns. I'm putting Jalen Hurts in A tier because I think he's a really good quarterback. An excellent quarterback and a lot of, he would start on most franchises. That puts him in A tier. He would not start on Baltimore. He would not start on Kansas City. Josh Allen also gets A tier. I love Josh Allen's game. Holy shit, I love Josh Allen. Josh Allen is like a, he's like a true football player and I like that. He's a quarterback who is not afraid to actually run and be significantly physical and Buffalo uses him like that and I think that's awesome. He also can make absolutely disgusting throws. He's got a cannon for an arm, but he doesn't get S tier. He's, he's kind of a turnover magnet. He will huck that shit more than he should and he fumbles too, so I can't give him S tier. Jimmy G is D tier to me. I have no idea how the NFL teams have been hoodwinked by Jimmy G so long. I don't know how he can continues to get serious contracts. I get it. You're an NFL quarterback. You get paid a lot of money. This dude is scamming. He is properly scamming everyone by being handsome. The Jimmy G wouldn't be in the fucking league if he wasn't handsome, bro. I actually believe that. Non-delusionally believe that. Gosh, Jordan Love. I'm giving Jordan Love A tier. I know that's really bold, but wow, Jordan Love was so, so, so good. And he was so good in really big games. I know he had that interception at the end of the championship game against the 49ers, but he led them there, and he played a really good game during that championship game if you take that interception away. He played really, really well. I really like Jordan Love, and he fucking dominated the Dallas Cowboys in the round before that. So he's played well at high levels. He's young, and, and I really think Jordan Love could be an S-tier pretty soon here. I think in two years, I wouldn't be shocked if I'm putting Jordan Love as an S-tier quarterback. Okay, Bryce Young. I think Bryce Young had such a shitty first year that people are going to be really frustrated about this, but I'm still putting Bryce Young in C-tier, and, and I'm actually tempted to put him in B-tier. Bryce Young is in the worst situation you could possibly be in as an NFL quarterback. My favorite comparison is Peyton Manning, who had a horrible rookie career because that's what happens when you get drafted round one pick one you go to a really shitty situation unless of course you're Caleb Williams you're getting drafted to a team that was pretty solid with pretty c-tier quarterback play from Justin Fields now you load up on more talent so he's going to a great situation Bryce Young is is in a floundering organization I still think he's a c-tier quarterback but that being said then I have shit on CJ Stroud CJ Stroud's getting a tier dude he hilariously like CJ Stroud is actually closer to s tier than like a lot of guys. Here's a super bold, like incredibly aggressive thing to say. Who would you rather have as your franchise quarterback right now, CJ Stroud or Josh Allen? I think I'm taking Josh Allen right now, but like, holy shit, maybe I'm actually taking CJ Stroud. Ooh, I don't even want to be asked that hypothetical question. CJ Stroud outperformed like crazy. There were very few people going into the NFL draft who would have drafted CJ Stroud with that pick. There were very few people. So yes, if you're like Ohio State God or you're just the most genius, smartest man of all time, Time, you can say, oh, they should have taken CJ Stroud. I would have taken CJ Stroud. I didn't think that at all going into the draft. It was clear to me that round one pick one was Bryce Young and round one pick two was CJ Stroud. He significantly outperformed. He had success in the playoffs as a rookie on a Texas team that's supposed to be dog shit. Historic rookie quarterback season. One of the best, if not the best rookie quarterback season of all time. Absolute A tier. CJ Stroud's a beast. Where do we go from here? Daniel Jones. So here's the thing about Daniel Jones, right? Daniel Jones is C tier. He's not not D tier. I'm not going to pretend like he's horrible. I'm not going to be delusional and put him any higher. But the thing about Daniel Jones is he's been on the Giants now for, I think, six years. The Bears gave up on Justin Fields after two years of mediocre quarterback play. The Steelers gave up on Kenny Pickett after two years of mediocre quarterback play. The Giants are sticking with Dan Daniel Jones. I'm really shocked by this. I'm shocked that he continues to have this massive contract and this huge role in the team when he just is not that good. Daniel Jones is a C tier quarterback for me. He goes right alongside Justin Fields. Out of these three guys, though, I'm taking Bryce Young any day of the week. Joe Burrow gets A tier. He's had serious playoff success. I know he's injured this year, but he still gets A tier. I'm not, I'm not moving him from A tier. I don't think there's much to be said about that. He's an excellent quarterback. He has flashes of being super hot dog water though. He really does. He always has a couple games where you're like, shit, is he actually still good? And then he is. Brock Purdy gets A tier too. I know you're pissed. I know he's a system quarterback. I know you're so mad. This guy went to the Super Bowl. He's the next Tom Brady, whether you like it or not. Get ready for Brock Purdy to continue to be a starting quarterback and play at a really high level for the next 10 years. I'm going to put two around along Geno Smith as our second B-tier quarterback. Tua scares me a little bit. 
Tua is a little wishy-washy sometimes. Tua is one of those guys who'll put up like this absolute bonkers stat line, and then it comes with big game, and he's just not the best decision maker right now. He's still young, and I'd be happy, and I think a lot of teams be happy to have Tua as their quarterback, but I'm not putting him up here with any of these guys yet. I think so far this is a really accurate list, and I'm actually gonna try and like order these guys. How I would order? How would I order these guys? I would order them exactly like this. Actually, I'd go Stroud. No, I'd go Josh Allen, Stroud. No. Sorry. Sorry, Stroud. I love you. I'd go Josh Allen, Burrow, Stroud, Hurts, Love, Purdy. And Mahomes has got to be in front of Lamar. Two has got to be in front of Gino. I'm not going to be ranking them the whole time like that. I just wanted to do it for my own mental. Let's throw a couple D tiers in here. Mac Jones, proven below average quarterback play. I don't want to hear it about Mac Jones. Drew Locke, proven mediocre quarterback play. Brissett, you get D tier two. Yeah, he's, you know, he's, he's okay. If you really badly need someone to just not lose the game for you, you could throw Brissett in, but he ain't going to win the game for you either. God, who else is in here? I'm skipping some of these guys because it's just not even worth the discussion. Sam Darnold. Sam Darnold could almost get, can I really? even have an F tier? Like, can you be an F tier NFL quarterback? Oh, I don't want to be a dick. I'm going to give Will Levis C tier. Um, I just haven't seen enough of Will Levis yet. He has had some flashes of being really, really good. I don't think I've seen enough Will Levis to give him anything higher than C tier, but I'm not putting him in D tier because he, he definitely looked pretty solid. I just got to see a little more Will Levis. Kyler Murray's B tier. I think Kyler Murray at all times has A and S tier potential. I'm not giving up on Kyler Murray. I really like Kyler Murray. I just think the Arizona Cardinals are just, they just suck right now, man. They just suck right now. It's that simple. And obviously he was out for a decent portion of the season, but Kyler's still really good. And I'm definitely taking Kyler over any of these guys. Literally any of them. I'll put Richardson in that same tier too. Anthony Richardson was off to a really hot start. That injury kind of sucked, but from what I saw prior, definitely getting B tier. Dude, Jared Goff, I almost could give Jared Goff A tier. Jared Goff was really good this season, but here's the thing. Last season, Jared Goff was trash. The season before that, he was trash. This season, Jared Goff, he played A tier quarterback. I can't just give him A tier though. I've seen too much bad. So I gotta, I got a temper expectation. I'm gonna put him in B tier, but I love Jared Goff. I believe in him. Give me another good season, Goff. I got you, bro. I'll throw you back up in A tier. Here's probably like one of the most difficult guys to evaluate right here is Russell Wilson. Like just a few years ago in Seattle, Russell Wilson was, you know, for the first eight weeks of the season, he was front runner for MVP or maybe three years ago, but whatever. Like this is a guy who's played MVP caliber football recently, but also has looked like shit recently. It's, this is a really tough one to evaluate, but I I'm going to put Russell Wilson in B tier. I think he's the starter in Pittsburgh right now. If I'm Pittsburgh, I think he's better than Justin Fields. I think he's obviously lost a step. He's not as good as he was in Seattle. I'm not ready to give him C tier. Honestly, like if I was going to do F, I feel like Zach Wilson is just fucking trash. Zach Wilson is really bad, which, oh, I hate saying something like that. I actually want to make this point. I'm not going soft, but I want to make this point. Like when I say somebody is trash or ass, they're ass on the, on the best level. They are incredibly good at football, but in the national football, league, their ass. I think everybody already kind of knows that, but I just, I don't know. I meet these guys in person and there's a video of me on the internet floating around saying Zach Wilson's fucking ass. Like, I don't really mean that. I just see me he's struggling in the NFL. Whatever. Dude, you slept with like with your best friend's mom and it pissed off your ex-girlfriend. That's so sick. Let's let that clip be out there, bro. Let that clip be out there. But yeah, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't trust you to win my team a Super Bowl. I'm sorry. I would trust you to sleep with my friend's mom. Aaron Rodgers is uh, A tier. I know we didn't get to see Aaron Rodgers this year, but like Aaron Aaron Rodgers is A tier. I would have loved to see Aaron Rodgers play this year and then maybe I could slap him up in S tier, but I don't think I can give Aaron Rodgers S tier having not played a snap this season. So I'm just gonna put him at A tier on an assumption. I think it's a fair one though. Justin Herbert gets A tier too. Ooh, you know what? If I'm, th I'm throwing a lot of guys in A tier, I'm actually gonna bump Jordan Love down. I'm gonna bump Jordan Love down to B tier. He's the best of the B tier, but I don't want too many in A. I think that's unfair. I think the rest of these guys deserve to be up here. I think there's two arguments you can make. I think you could argue for Jalen Hurts. You could argue for Brock Purdy, but ah, maybe not. I don't even think you could argue for Brock Purdy. Brock Purdy had a spectacular season. You could maybe argue Jalen Hurts, but I am not moving Herbert. I'm not moving Stroud. I'm not moving Rodgers. I'm not moving Burrow, and I'm not moving Josh Allen. So, debate a wall. Um, gosh, Tannehill's C tier two. I'm not willing to put Tannehill up with some of these B tier guys, but like, I if I'm an NFL franchise and I don't have a quarterback, I don't mind Tannehill as an option. He's a solid option. So he, he's better than some of these guys for sure. We'll put him at the top of C tier. Dak Prescott gets B tier because he consistently underperforms in the playoffs very consistently. He also consistently has spectacular regular seasons. He is consistently a top five MVP regular season candidate. That's tr also true. Dak has been a top five MVP candidate 
Dominic for the last four years. And then he sucked in the playoffs for the last four years. I have to put him in B tier for that reason. If he performs well in the playoffs, he gets A. If he does what he does in the playoffs and also isn't that great in the regular season, he gets C. So he's he's staying in B tier. I like Dak Prescott. Sometimes I don't know if it's Dak or if it's just the game plan or like him and McCarthy and the whole Cowboys organization's curse or something, but they just underperform too much. I can't give you A tier. Oh boy, where are we at now? Some of these dudes are not even worth ranking. Like, where am I going to rank Stetson Bennett? Can't even consider. What did I rank Trey Lance? Jameis Winston. Ooh, Baker Mayfield. Baker Mayfield gets a high B tier. I'm not going to put him up with some of these guys, but um, I mean, gosh, if I had made a, a tier list two years ago, Baker would have been D tier. Same thing last year would have been D tier, but this season, Baker played great football. Great football, and he finally found a home. He's been like this like tossed around play thing with all these teams for these one-year deals, and he's found a home in Tampa Bay. So congratulations, Baker Mayfield. Definitely getting B tier for that. Stafford's B tier too. He's definitely not as good as he was in like his Lions prime, but he's he's still an excellent quarterback. I, I can't give him A tier though. I will give ah I can't give Trevor Lawrence A tier either. I'm tempted to give Trevor Lawrence A tier, but I won't. He definitely gets a really high B tier though. I think the highest B tier quarterbacks are probably Trevor Lawrence, Jordan Love. Now these two are at the top of B tier by themselves. I think this is accurate as I look at this. It's like there's a lot in B tier, but that's kind of how it is in the NFL. They're really how it is. There's like some incredible incredible quarterbacks and everybody else is like shit i'm just kind of waiting for my patrick mahomes to get drafted or to come to this team who else let's th let's throw sam howell in here sam howell is, is a fucking shot chucker sam howell is like the nba what's his nba equivalent who just chucks up shots gets a crazy stat line every game but is not actually that effective i don't know the nba comparison but sam howell has like 50 pass attempts a game so he's ending with these really impressive stat lines so if you're not looking at pass attempts he looks like he's probably a top five quarterback sam howell is okay. He doesn't make the best decisions. He was on a shitty commander's team and they basically just said, hey, look, buddy, start chucking that fucking thing because we're always losing these games. So let's just throw 50 passes a game. And uh, he did it and he did it better than uh, some guys would have, but he doesn't deserve B tier for it. So I'm going to give him C tier. Who else is worth even ranking here? Mario is trash. Desmond Ritter's trash. Thank God the Falcons got Kirk Cousins. Seriously, the quarterback play, like Atlanta is such a talented roster. For them to have performed as poorly as they did, it was really frustrating. I didn't like Ritter or Mariota. Oh, Kirk Cousins and Derek Carr. I gotta get both these guys. Okay, I think Derek Carr is not good. He is just not good. I'm giving Derek Carr C tier. I think that's gonna frustrate a lot of people. I think a lot of people want him in B, but I just can't now, dude. I can't do it. Uh, Kirk Cousins, quintessential B tier quarterback. Cousins and Jared Goff, could hang out together. I think in the Atlanta Falcons offense, Kirk Cousins definitely has an opportunity to be A tier this season. But then you think about the Vikings. The Vikings have had a lot of really good weapons too. Like Justin Jefferson's probably, he's a top two wide receiver in football. He's had that for a huge chunk of his career. And before that, he had Stefan Diggs, right? So he's always had some really good threats. I just think he has even more threats now. He has an even better. And then he's had Dalvin Cook. Yeah, Kirk doesn't get A, he gets B. And uh, if he has an amazing season here with Atlanta, he can get A. I don't think I'm gonna rank anybody else. If I didn't rank your absolute favorite quarterback of all time, you can email complaints to Ligma Sugma. This is my final tier list right here. Mahomes, Lamar, and S tier, the A tier, Josh Allen, Burrow. I actually love this. I'm not messing with this. I'm not messing with this at all. We now have S plus and S tier because I don't think five tiers works for wide receivers. You need more. Let's start with our S plus wide receivers. I know we got injured, but Justin Jefferson, to me, is the most complete wide receiver in football right now. Honestly, I'm leaving S plus tier just like that. I don't think I'm going to put anyone else in it. The thing with wide receivers is it's kind of difficult because sometimes you have an amazing wide receiver on a team that just sucks at throwing the football and their stats don't reflect how good they are. But sometimes you're Tyree Kill, you get traded away from Patrick Mahomes, one of the best quarterbacks of all time, and you still put up absolutely dominant bonkers insane numbers. The most clear S plus wide receiver to me is Tyree Kill. I'm putting Jefferson at two. He's like the most complete wide receiver in football to me. Even more complete than Tyreek Hill. I know he's injured this season. I want to see how he does coming off that injury. I hope he heals up and he's just as amazing as he was. Justin Jefferson's such a stud. All right, let's move to S tier. These are the guys that they're not quite these guys, but they're still absolutely incredible. Diggs. Diggs is so good. He's obviously a bit of a diva. And now he's going to be in Houston. So he could have an amazing season, but I can't put him in S plus tier. There were some big drops this season from Diggs. Notably the go ahead playoff touchdown. My memory is escaping me, but I literally just saw the clip. 
clip. You guys might have seen that video. He dropped that puppy. If you want S plus tier, you gotta catch that ball. He's still incredible. I'm not like fully shitting on him. He's going to S tier, but I think Jamar Chase is incredible too. This is a bummer season. This it honestly sucks sometimes. Like your star quarterback just goes down. And now you got Jake Browning throwing the ball to you. It's just not the same as Joe Burrow. This was an off season for Jamar. He missed a game, but he's got a hundred receptions, twelve hundred yards. Like Adam Thielen has more receptions than him. But I'm not putting Adam Thielen in a higher tier than Jamar Chase. I'm still putting Jamar Chase in S tier. He's insane. CD Lamb goes in S tier too. I actually think CD Lamb might be the closest wide receiver to S plus tier out of any of these guys. CD Lamb is excellent. Obviously, he put up the absolutely insane stat line, but that's also a product of Dallas's offense. CD Lamb ended the season with the most receptions of any wide receiver. He also ended the season with the most targets of any wide receiver. It's basically a volume stat at that point. But what I think is so impressive is Tyree Kill had 50 more yards on 16 less receptions. That's impressive. So I still love CeeDee Lamb. I think CeeDee Lamb could go S plus tier if he has another season like he just had, but I'm still taking both these guys over CeeDee Lamb. Devontae Adams is a guy who usually I feel like could be S plus tier. You just don't want to be in Oakland right now. Sorry, Las Vegas. You don't want to be in Las Vegas right now. This is just not a friendly spot for Devontae Adams right now. Still an S tier wide receiver. He deserves to be up here with all these guys. He's still so good. He's still ended the season with 103 receptions and 1,100 receiving yards, but yeah, he would much rather be in Green Bay with Jordan Love right now. This is where I'm gonna start to piss people off, but I think the last guy I'm putting as an S-tier wide receiver is Mike Evans. The list is subject to change. I've had people get really excited and then edit their comment before, but Mike Evans is such an insanely good wide receiver. Every single year, he has the body of work and the production. He gets S-tier. If I had to order this too, by the way, the best S-plus wide receiver is Tyreek Hill. I think the next best is Justin Jefferson. After that, I'm taking CeeDee Lamb, then I'm taking Devontae, then I'm taking Mike Evans, then I'm taking Diggs, then I'm taking Jamar. I think this order is right. I'm not going to order it the whole thing, just like the quarterback one. I just wanted that to be pointed out. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. The only thing I would switch is I might put Devontae Adams at three. Now, let me do the most obvious A tier guys that I just couldn't quite put in S tier yet. AJ Brown, Amon St. Brown, so we get two Browns, and DK Metcalf. Honestly, the only switch I would make right now, if I really had to switch something right now, AJ Brown and Jamar. Jamar's output this season was not good. It really was not good. And AJ Brown's output this season was very good. I know I said the whole thing about Jake Browning, but Jamar Chase is was at the end of S tier for me. I don't know. It was a big step down for Jamar. And AJ Brown looked really good this season. I'm keeping it like this. Amon St. Brown had an absolutely spectacular year. He was so sure-handed. He was such a good wide receiver. Put up great numbers. I'm not putting him above any of these guys. I'm not going to be totally biased, but uh, I do think he deserves A tier. DK Metcalf is simply too good, too much of a physical specimen, and too fast to be any lower than A tier. I think what's most impressive about DK stat line, and honestly, a guy like George Pickens, we're talking 66 receptions here, but 1,114 yards. Like, 15 or 16 yards per reception on average. I also love to look at this, the longest touchdowns of the season. This is random, a side note, but CeeDee Lamb had the longest with 92. Then it was George Pickens, Khalil Shakir, Gus Edwards, and that's Gus Edwards on a pass, by the way. T. Higgins, Puka Nakua, Darius Slayton. Tyree Kill. This is even more shocking about Tyree Kill. His longest was 78, which is still really long, but like, you'd think it'd be longer. What did he say? Oh. It's about to get a little spooky in here. What's so insane is this tier list is so old that they don't have Puka Pukunakua. Can we just pretend that this goofy ass looking Rams dude is Pukunakua? So if someone skipped ahead in the video, they're gonna have no idea why this bum is sitting there. I think that's Ben Skaronic. I don't know who that is. We're pretending that's Pukunakua. Pukunakua gets A tier. It's one incredible season. He got a ton of targets and he was a stud. This guy's a beast. I can't give him SRS Plus quite yet. I just can't do it. It's honestly the same reason I can't give Aminra anything higher. Aminra had an amazing season, but like one really spectacular season like that, I'm not giving you SRS Plus. These guys have multiple seasons of excellent wide receiver play. I'm putting Garrett Wilson in A tier. I think Garrett Wilson is in like the worst of the worst positions. Zach Wilson for two years is so dog shit. And he's still managing to be a solid wide receiver. I think Garrett Wilson, you put him on literally any other team, any other position. He's so awesome. I'm a little biased because I'm a big Garrett Wilson fan but I can't put him in B tier because he's been underperforming, quote unquote, underperforming. He's got fucking Zach Wilson by the helm. Can you imagine? Oh, he should have had Aaron Rodgers this season. Oh, whatever. All right, let's get working on the B tier. I'm not necessarily done with A, but let's just get working on it. Gabriel Davis. Gabriel Davis to me is like the quintessential B tier wide receiver. This is a true wide receiver too. Another way to look at this tier list, is just basically your father. This is an insane wide receiver one. Any team would be so happy to have this player as their wide receiver one. This is tier 
string ladder make more sense now? Daddy, God wide receiver one, stud wide receiver one, wide receiver two, bum wide receiver two, make a wish. Here's an interesting one. When Tyree Kill stepped into this offense, Jalen Waddle took a really big aside. I don't know confidently that I could say Jalen Waddle would be a stud wide receiver one right now. I feel like last year I definitely would have said that, but I don't know. I'm gonna put him at wide receiver two for now. I can't put Zay Flowers in the same tier as Puka Nakua. Putting Zay Flowers right now in B tier, that's still pretty solid for a rookie, but you don't, you can't be in the same tier as Puka. I can't put Ku Puka in S, so Zay Flowers getting B. T Higgins would probably be a wide receiver one on a lot of teams. T Higgins is so good. But now I'm putting T Higgins in the same tier as Jamar. I think I'm messing myself up having Jamar in A. All right, I'm gonna do it. I'm moving Jamar back up to S so that T Higgins can be an A. I think T Higgins is an excellent wide receiver. He's just sharing targets with another excellent wide receiver. Oh, by the way, Amari Cooper, so good. Amari Cooper is such a slept on wide receiver. I almost want to put Amari in S. Yeah, I almost want to do it. I'm doing it. Fuck, I'm doing it. Amari Cooper is so nasty. I don't want to hear shit about Amari Cooper. Amari Cooper is a god wide receiver one. The lie detector determined that was a lie. Oh! George Pickens gets B tier. I'm not sold. Oh, I get so much shit for this. I'm not sold on George Pickens. I'm not. I think he's really good. I don't think he's A tier. I don't think I can put George Pickens in the same tier as Amon or St. Brown. I can't do it. I'm putting Nico Collins in B tier. This is also going to be a little frowned upon. He has really good stats, but I honestly just think that is because CJ Stroud was so good and he was just the guy who was there for that. They signed Diggs. I think because CJ Stroud wanted a super weapon and I think we're going to see Nico Collins fall off pretty drastically this year. I can't, I gotta put him in B. Michael Pittman's really good, but I'm not putting Michael Pittman in A tier. I'm not doing it quite yet. Calvin Ridley gets B tier. He's inconsistent. Christian Kirk gets B tier, also inconsistent. DeAndre Hopkins is too washed. I like D Hop. Many, many, many years D Hop is up here, but what's his output been recently? DeAndre Hopkins has just lost a step. He really has, man. He's such a good wide receiver, but he's lost a step. I'm putting him in B tier. You know who else I'm putting in D tier that's lost a step? Cooper Cup looks like shit out there. He has been completely dwarfed in one season season by Puka Nakua. Completely dwarfed. I'm not going to put him in B tier. I'm going to keep Cooper Cup in A tier. He can be right alongside Puka Nakua. But this man lost a step. Now, he may not have been fully healed from his injury. If that's the case, I'd love to see him be great this year. But I have a feeling that Puka's going to keep doing this and Cooper's going to keep doing this. I can't believe that his triple crown season was this, this recent, but I can't see him doing that again or even close to it. This is so hard. I'm stressing out now. Oh, I'm really stressing out now. I don't like this. Chris Godwin? Yeah. He gets B tier. He gets to be right alongside Calvin Ridley, Chris Kirk, etc. Ooh, what did you whip up? Holy bust down. Are you kidding me? Look at L just busted down. Ooh, dude, you're goaded with the sauce. You're gonna get the big sex later. You're gonna get super mega sex later. A little soy sauce bust down. L, thank you so much. Keenan Allen's getting S tier. Keenan Allen is so good. I love Keenan Allen. You know, Mike Williams? Ah, is Mike Williams an A or a B? I think Mike Williams is an A because I think he would be wide receiver one on a lot of teams, but on the Chargers, he was just alongside Keenan Allen, who's awesome too. I'll put Mike Williams in A. Do I have to move somebody else? Maybe Michael Pittman. Could Michael Pittman go A tier? Adam Thielen, B tier. Lockett, B tier. Devonta Smith gets A tier. He's a dog. Kadarius Tony does get D tier after the season. I'm not even just like being a dick and playing on the meme. He actually was so so bad. Valdez Scanlon can go C. Skymore can go C. These guys are so unbelievably mid. They just want a Super Bowl, by the way. Alec Pierce is B tier. Jared Judas look like shit. I'm giving him C tier. I hope he has a better season. I hope he just hated Denver. Quentin Johnson's look like shit. You get C tier. You're not down here quite yet, but you look like shit this season. Juju looked like shit this season. Sorry, Juju. I love you. Lazard's ass. Odell's still B. You're testing me, Odell. You're losing step two. Deontay Johnson's actually really good. I'm gonna go high B tier on Deontay Johnson. I really like Deontay Johnson. High B tier is like Davis, Johnson, Waddle, D-Hop, Zay. Oh God, this is so hard. McLaurin has lost a step. He gets B. I'm not putting you up there with the big boys. Maybe lost a step's not the right word, but I don't like McLaurin as much as I used to. Who are these homeless people? Is this Jalen Hyatt? You get C. If you're a Giants wide receiver, you get C. You guys are just not good. Maybe on a different team, I could see your potential, but I just can't see it quite yet. I actually really like Cortland Sutton. I'm gonna go Cortland Sutton B tier, assuming that's Cortland Sutton. DJ Moore is A tier. DJ Moore is excellent. Chase Claypool is getting C. He deserves it. And who do I really put, like, Realistically, who do I put down with Kadarius Tony? Like, who is that bad? Nobody's that bad. Addison's a good B tier wide receiver. Let's see how Addison is this season. He could eventually get A. He'll go B for now. Debo's A tier. Debo's A tier not just really as a wide receiver, but just like in general, like as an NFL athlete, you know, because he does so much more than your standard wide receiver does. I actually think Ayuk is A tier too. I think like the way that these guys are used is excellent on San Fran, but like if you just 
just put Ayuk somewhere where he's wide receiver one and Debo somewhere where he's wide receiver one, they're both gonna go just unbelievably off. I think they both have to go A tier. I'll space him out so he doesn't look goofy. Hollywood's a good B tier wide receiver. Hollywood has not played A tier wide receiver football recently. I can't take him any higher. Oh, now we're getting serious. Do any of you even deserve to be ranked? Uh, Jaden Reed is is okay. Christian Watson is okay. I don't think anybody's arguing that these guys should be any higher in the C tier. They fit right along in here. Is there anybody else I even want to rank? Drake London gets B. I'm not completely sold on the Drake London hype. He's good. I'm not completely sold. We need to put a few people in D tier with Kadarius Tony, because then I'm going to look like a Kadarius Tony absolute hater. Like, who deserves to be that low? We're going to throw Greg Dortch. Oh, Olave. I got to rank Olave. Olave's really good. I'll put Olave up in A tier. Olave is actually nasty. Hunter Renfro can go in D tier. Who else is just super hot ass, bro? I'm gonna be honest. I don't even know who this is. I have no idea who this is. So you can take D tier. <laughs> Holy shit. This was so overwhelming. Quarterback was so much easier than this. How bad is this? Let me take a good look at this. S plus tier, I'm so happy with. Tyreek and Justin Jefferson are S plus. The best of the S tier is CD Lamb and Devontae Adams. So those are where they should be. Evans, Diggs, AJ, Jamar, Keenan, and Amari in S tier. That's perfect. I would not mess with that at all. Does anybody in A tier need to get bumped down or moved up? Aminra, I'm keeping you A. Cooper Cup, you have lost a step. You are not S tier anymore. I saw the last half of this season, buddy. You are getting dusted by Puka Nakua. And it's not even a knock on Puka Nakua. DK, I don't think he's good enough for S tier. Debo is excellent. Brandon Ayuk is excellent, but no higher than this. T Higgins too high. I can't have T Higgins up in, in A tier. No, he is a step down from Jamar. But Jamar's an S. Shit! No, I'm doing it. T, you're getting B. Smith, Mike Williams, DJ Moore, Brandon Ayuk, Chris Olave. I'm calling it. There's your NFL wide receivers tier list. I won't even deny the allegations this time, man. This was not fun. This was actually really hard. 2024 NFL running back tier list. Keep in mind, there are a bunch of rookies that we won't be able to talk about right now, like Blake Corum. This year's running back class doesn't have nearly as much talent as last year's class, at least on paper. So we won't be ranking any of those guys. We've got five tiers. Elite, 1K plus yards, solid, should split reps, and then true RB2 material. You can think of it as S, A, B, B, C, and D, but frankly, if you're starting NFL running back, you're not shit. So running back is a position where like 80% of the league kind of feels like the same back. And then there's a couple real standout guys. So I didn't think it was fair to really have a D tier. All right, where do we start? Let's start with the easiest one on this list. Christian McCaffrey in elite tier. Bell cow running back who can run the ball incredibly effectively, can catch the ball incredibly effectively. He's exactly how you would make a running back in a lab. The only guy that I am tempted to put in the tier with Christian McCaffrey is Nick Chubb. I think Nick Chubb is probably probably the most, I don't want to say underrated because I think people understand how good he is, but he is not talked about with the amount of skill that he has. Obviously, last season, Nick Chubb did get injured, but can we just talk about this absolutely, undeniably ridiculous stat line that Nick Chubb has put up every single year since he's been in the league? This man averages on his career 5.3 yards per carry. Every time you are handing the ball to Nick Chubb, he is getting you halfway to a first down on average. That is disgusting. Now, I think the Browns offense is very favorable for running backs. I'll, I'll definitely throw that into the equation, but Nick Chubb is so unbelievably good. I really hope the injury doesn't set him back too far. I want to see more full season Nick Chubb. Look at this, man. A lot of times you see running backs do this their first and their second year, and then you see a really steep drop off after that. And I think what differentiates really, truly incredible running backs being able to do this. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. He's actually, he's almost getting better. Very few guys can do that. Nick Chubb deserves this. I can't really put him a lead since he didn't play full last season and who knows how he will be coming off this injury, but I'm putting him there. The only other guy that really does that is Derrick Henry. Father time really is not kind to running backs. Derrick Henry is one of very few running backs that can play this many years and continue to put up a thousand yard seasons. Coming off in a thousand two hundred yard season, my only knock on Derrick Henry is not really a knock, but the reason I can't put him in elite tier is he's a bit one dimensional. I would put him obviously in the elite tier in this 2020 season when he did the 2,000 rushing yards, but at some point, he's kind of a volume guy. The Titans offense for a while is just hand the ball off to Derrick Henry. He's going to run up the middle. He's bigger than everybody. He's going to run them over. This is not a knock on Derrick Henry. He is absolutely a top three running back in the league, but I'm not putting him up there with Chris McCaffrey. And frankly, I actually think this order is correct. I think the best in the league is McCaffrey. I think the second best in the league is Nick Chubb, and I think the third best in the league is Derrick Henry. Gosh, if I had to go to the next, to the fourth best, and by the way, these 
These are all guys that I see in this upcoming season going over 1,000 yards. I absolutely see Nick Chubb full season doing that. Same with Derrick Henry, guaranteed. McCaffrey's going to do it. Saquon Barkley is my next one. I have always personally loved Saquon Barkley. On the Giants is just kind of a bummer, especially when you're a team where no one is scared of your passing threat. They are going to load the box, and it's going to be more difficult for you. And Derrick Henry really has seen that his whole career. Saquon Barkley, like with Derrick Henry and the Titans, a lot of times they just know they're going to hand it off to him. There's still nothing they can do about it. The Giants was an even worse scenario of that. So when you look at Saquon Barkley's career, it's not as impressive as a guy like Nick Chubb or a guy like Derrick Henry. But if you take a look really volume-wise, 2022 season, the Giants, he had 295 attempts, 1,300 yards, 4.4 yards per carry. Now in 2022, Derrick Henry has got three more touchdowns 200 more yards, but he's also got 60 more attempts. I honestly believe that Saquon Barkley is one of the most talented running backs in the league just on paper. I just don't think he's been able to flourish in a New York Giants organization that I don't think has done him any favors. I'm so excited to see him in Philadelphia where hopefully has a really big breakout season because I've been on the Saquon train for a long time and he, I don't know, I don't think he's as explosive as his rookie season. I don't think he's there anymore, but hopefully he can still have a really, really solid season. I think rookie... Saquon, or really even sophomore season Saquon, in a better offense where we can really see him utilized properly, might be an elite running back, but I'm not comfortable putting him there. I'm keeping him in the 1K tier. I need another tier. This looks much better now because there's so many guys that are better than solid. Like, I I'm not going to put a guy like Jameer Gibbs in solid. I'm not going to say that. He's better than solid. I'm also not going to put a guy like B. John Robinson. I'm not putting B. John Robinson in solid. He's better than that, but I'm not ready to put him up with these guys either. I cannot be putting Jameer Gibbs in the same tier here as Nick Chubb. I love Jameer Gibbs. I want to see more out of him. I can't put him up there, Nick Chubb. Now, I think if we're going to talk about a thousand plus rushing yard season, we do got to talk about all the players in the league who just did it. A great example is Kyron Williams. Kyron Williams was the third in the league in rushing yards. And what's so incredible, Derrick Henry, 1167, but he's got 52 more attempts than Kyron Williams had. Kyron Williams, if he got the volume that Derrick Henry had, he's kind of in the Christian McCaffrey range. He really could have led the league if he wasn't injured for those two games. And honestly, as I say that, I'm realizing I'm just I'm just naming these wrong and I'm confusing myself. I'm gonna rename this superstar. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Because yes, honestly, I think Kyron Williams will have another 1,000 plus season, but I'm not ready to put Kyron Williams with these guys either. So in the star category, let's start with a few guys there. I think Kyron Williams, absolutely a star running back. That's not Kyron Williams. Is that Kyron Williams? Isn't that Cam Akers? Yeah, that's Cam Akers. Guys, we're all gonna pretend that this is Kyron Williams, okay? Star. Absolutely. Another star running back, Jameer Gibbs. No question. Jameer Gibbs had absurdly good efficiency, almost five yards per carry, if not a little bit more. 5.2 yards per carry on 182 attempts. Now, granted, it's nice to be splitting reps with another good running back. It does make your average yards per carry better. You're not fatigued, right? So this is a bit of a cherry pick stat, but 10 touchdowns, 5.2 yards per carry, and he was not a bell cow running back. He gets star. B. John Robinson's a freak show. I don't need to do stats on this one. He's, I, I can't put him up here with these guys yet, but if you're starting an NFL franchise, you would be so happy to have any of these three guys, Kyron Williams, B. John Robinson, or Jameer Gibbs. Jonathan Taylor is a really difficult one because we all know Jonathan Taylor's absolutely ridiculous 2021 season where he put 332 carries, 1,800 yards, 5.5 yards per carry, and 18 touchdowns. But since that, we saw big regression last year. We see an injury now. This, honestly, sadly, this is kind of what most NFL running backs for your tenure looks like. You see these electric rookie years when they got the fresh legs, you see an injury, you see it kind of start to decline and it's only those really rare players that defy this logic. Frankly, the guys that have defied it are right here, Nick Chubb and Derrick Henry. And then these other guys in star are all really young. So I can't put Jonathan Taylor up in superstar with these guys. Maybe he can defy it. Maybe he come back this season and be incredible, but I'm not putting him any higher than star right now. A personal bias, I will put Kenneth Walker in star. I think he is absolutely incredible. He's had some really good seasons and he split a few reps here and there with Zach Charbonnet. So he's not really a bell cow statistically. I can't have Kenneth Walker in solid. I just can't. I'm a little biased, but I just can't do it. Now, as I look at some of these other guys, I got to be honest, the stats are just very deceiving sometimes, especially for running backs. Let's talk about a guy like Raheem Mostert. Raheem Mostert is an 1,000 plus rusher on 209 carries. That's really impressive. But I don't think that that says that Raheem Mostert is a top 10 running back in the league. I really don't. 
Same goes for Najee Harris. Najee Harris wasn't a thousand plus rusher this season, but Najee Harris looked so slow this season. Najee Harris did not look anything like rookie Najee Harris. Watching the Pittsburgh Steelers on offense and watching Najee Harris, I cannot confidently put him up with some of these other guys. Same thing with James Conner. I like James Conner. I like that he's a thousand plus rusher. I'm not taking him over any of these five guys. I'm taking all five of these guys over James Conner. I'm not just talking about fantasy football either. I really mean watching game, the eye test. I'm going to put those guys in solid. So let's start with the solid tier here. Joe Mixon. I think he's lost a step. I really do think he's lost a step. We'll see how he is in Houston. I don't think this is the same Joe Mixon we've seen in the past. I, ho I hope I'm proved wrong. In fact, I would love to be proved wrong by all of these guys because running back is such a brutal position in the NFL. It's so unforgiving. I think Joe Mixon has is, is lost a step. I think James Conner goes in that same solid tier. I think Miles Sanders is your quintessential solid running back. He's a solid running back. He is nothing more and nothing less. Raheem Moser can go in solid as well. Here's another one. This one's gonna be really controversial. I'm not sold on James Cook. Statistically, James Cook, great rookie season. I'm not taking James Cook over any of the guys in this six. I'm taking Jacobs, Kenneth Walker, Jonathan Taylor, Jameer Gibbs, Bijan, and Kyron Williams before I'm taking James Cook. I don't feel like I can put him in the same tier. He really did have a solid season, but I don't know. The running back position is difficult. That's all I'm going to say about it, but I'm keeping James Cook in solid. One more good season out of him, and, and I will have no choice but to move him up. And frankly, there might be a swap here. I could see out of the guys in star, I see Bijan having an excellent season. Same with Kyron, same with Jameer, and same with Jacobs. I think Jonathan Taylor and Kenneth Walker are the two guys that I could see potentially having a regression. Um, so these guys are on my on my drop watch right now. DeAndre Swift. I'm gonna get a lot of shit for this. Maybe. DeAndre Swift was fifth in the league in rushing yards. I am so underwhelmed by DeAndre Swift. The Lions traded DeAndre Swift because we weren't, you know, too excited about him. And I think Philly was just such a favorable place to be that he's putting up great stats, but you know, I wasn't too excited about DeAndre Swift and I'm not putting him in star up with those guys either. Who I will put up there though, Travis Etienne. I think Travis Etienne is excellent. He was an 1,000 plus rusher this season. He was an 1,000 plus rusher last season. He's a very complete running back. He's good in the pass game too. And frankly, when you when you look at rushing stats for 2023, 2023 was, a, was honestly an off year for like every single position. Lamar Jackson won the MVP on a very not spectacular season. The league leader in rushing yards had 1,400. Okay, and then these next guys are all barely eclipsing 1,000. Let's compare that to 2022, where you've got three guys at 1,500 plus. Saquon at 1,300 plus. It's not even close. Compare that to 2021, where Jonathan Taylor hits 1,800 plus. And then the big year where you've got Derrick Henry's 2K is 2020. Dalvin Cook hit 1,500. It was just a really shitty year for running backs. Statistics Statistically, it was not an impressive year for really anybody. Okay, there's nobody I want to succeed more than Brees Hall, but it has been a very difficult regime for Brees Hall. This will be the season that we see if Brees Hall is truly a star or superstar or not, because Ro Aaron Rodgers is behind the helm. There was just nothing going for this Jets offense because of Zach Wilson. I'm sorry, Zach Wilson. Sleep with my friend's mom all you want, bro, but it just is not a friendly offense for your running back when you guys can't pass the ball effectively. So Brees Hall, I'm putting him in solid. I hope he can be star or superstar. Okay, let's get in a few should split reps. Zeke Elliott is a shell of his former self, and I think he's best suited in a role where he's splitting reps. Let's keep going with this. By the way, also, I need to throw this in here. Jalen Warren. Holy shit, I love Jalen Warren. I'm not putting him in star tier, but I love Jalen Warren. I want Jalen Warren to start over Najee. Jalen Warren is so much more explosive. Honestly, it's probably good that they split reps because they're different styles of running back, but I love Jalen Warren. Alvin Kamara is a star running back. Debate a wall. I can't put... Ah, can I put Kamara in superstar? I'm keeping Kamara in star because it's not the same Kamara from two years ago, but damn, Kamara is so good. I think this tier is just hard to breach. That's all. I'm putting Najee right next to Jalen Warren. Unhitch the trailer, Najee. Where is rookie Najee, bro? Where'd he go? Oh my God. I can't believe I'm saying this. This is like a brutal drop off. I, and, and frankly, I actually think Austin Eckler will be splitting reps in this upcoming season with Washington. He dropped off so fast. Austin Eckler has been such an amazing running back. He has such an amazing story, an undrafted free agent. But this last season, I couldn't believe it. Actually, I couldn't. Hold up. Can we watch the video? All right. Now, I just want to say as I play this clip, I understand that it's just one run, right? It's just one run. Doesn't say everything, but let's just watch this real quick. Okay. So someone tracked this, by the way. He hit a top speed of 13, one three miles per hour. Geno Smith in OTAs hit a top speed of 20.3 miles per hour. Geno Smith 
Smith. On his career, he's averaging 4.4 yards per carry this last season, 3.5 yards per carry. The thing is, the running back position is not like the quarterback position. In the quarterback position, you could have a horrible season or multiple, and then you finally find the right offense or you find the right scheme or something clicks, and all of a sudden you're playing great. I think Baker Mayfield's a good example. The running back position is not like that. You need fresh legs and explosiveness, and beyond that, I don't see how he just comes back and revives his former self. I just don't see it. I'm keeping him in shit split reps. I mean, some of these guys are not even worth like putting in here. Like Samaj P. Ryan should split reps, right? Jarek McKinnon should split reps. These guys are like 30 plus. It's not even worth ranking. Let's talk about the guys that we really should rank. Here's the guy who I think I lost, lost a big step. I think Dalvin Cook did lose a big step too. I don't know where I would put Dalvin Cook right now. I don't think he's a should split reps guy. I think he's a solid running back, but Tony Pollard, I am not sold on Tony Pollard. Tie me up and bend me over. I'm not sold on Tony Pollard. I think Tony Pollard had some crazy hype coming into the season. Like, oh, he's finally RB1 for the Cowboys. And he just underperformed. For Tony Pollard in his bell cow season with the Dallas Cowboys, he's got 252 attempts for just barely over a thousand yards and six touchdowns. Dallas Cowboys love to run the football. Dallas Cowboys have a very friendly offense for running backs. I don't think this is a really a good enough stat line for Tony Pollard. For comparison, James Conner has more rushing yards on 44 less attempts, and he's on the Arizona Cardinals. I'm keeping him in solid tier. I'm sorry, Tony Pollard. Damian Pierce is solid. Gosh, why, why, like last season, I thought he was going to be amazing because of that first season, and then I don't know what happened there. I really don't know what happened there with Damian Pierce. Pacheco's a star. Pacheco's a star. The Kansas City Chiefs don't give a shit about their running backs, and Isaiah Pacheco still manages to be such an incredible running back. I really like Isaiah Pacheco. I hope he has a superstar-esque season. I'll put Pacheco in star for now. Aaron Jones is still a star star running back. Absolutely. Aaron Jones is excellent. It's sad that Green Bay did him kind of dirty. A.J. Dillon's solid though. He's all right. He's nothing crazy about A.J. Dillon. I like him. He's a good splitting reps guy. Although I feel like I got to move some of these guys. I mean, yeah, I guess I could put guys in RB2. Uh, I love Jamal Williams. He's not a starting running back. He's just not. I'm sorry, Jamal Williams. It was a fun season with the Lions. You are a rushing touchdown shark and I loved it. You're not an RB1. Smash AP runs on RB1. Fournette is no longer an RB1. Javante Williams is solid. I think he has a lot of potential. I almost need a tier for like potential. Javante Williams still has really good potential. Same with, you know, Brees Hall. Same with Jalen Warren. Same with James Cook. Same with Pollard. But just not there yet. I'm not sold on Ramondre Stevenson. I'm putting him in solid. I'm just not sold. It's not fun being on the Patriots, though. Not right now. Dante Foreman is solid. I like it when Dante Foreman comes in. He always has a couple games where he just goes off. I like him. Hey, so anybody else who want to... A Rojo is solid. I think this is Antonio Gibson. He's solid. Brian Robinson's solid. Neither of these guys really blow me away. Kareem Hunt is a really good backup running back to have. He's solid. Honestly, I'm leaving my list like this. In his own league is Christian McCaffrey. The superstar running backs, like the guys who should give be getting paid the big money. Nick Chubb, Derrick Henry, Saquon Barkley. After that is the stars. Kyron Williams. Sorry, it's Cam Akers, but it's Kyron Williams. You know what I'm saying? Cam it. <laughs> Fuck. Kyron Williams, Kamara, Bijan, Jameer Gibbs, Josh Jacobs, Jonathan Taylor, K9, Travis Etienne, Isaiah Pacheco, Aaron Jones. And then you've got your solid running backs. Not quite stars, but it's a solid RB1. James Cook, Tony Pollard, Jalen Warren and Najee, Brees Hall, Joe Mixon, James Conner, Miles Sanders, Raheem Mostert, DeAndre Swift, Dalvin Cook. Can I really put Damian Pearson solid? I don't know about these two. I'm getting questionable with these two. This is my NFL running back tier list. Save your MM casual comments for, um, I'm gonna rank every NFL team right before the team starts, so you can save it for that. All right, y'all. Hey, I love you guys. Thanks for watching. As always, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.